updates from Coachella. Coachella weekend one happened. Um, one of the wildest things to happen over Coachella weekend one that everyone's been going crazy over is this video which features Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith embracing while they meet each other behind the scenes, um, walking around Coachella. Coachella seems to be the one festival, um, in especially North America, that all the celebrities love to go to. Um, I'm assuming because they probably get sent free tickets or because it's a good time to get some easy content you know, whatever, put your face out there, marketing, promotion-wise, whatever. It seems to be the one festival they all seem to really like to go to. But I think it's also because of the range of musicians anyway, because it's quite a good one in terms of like, because I think European festivals like Primavera are probably better for, in terms of range. But I think Prim Coachella does a good good job like of like balancing it between the hip-hop and the pop stuff and the indie stuff and the DJ stuff. Right, it does a good balance. International guests, like they do a really good balance in terms of getting people on. Obviously, the tickets are probably overpriced, and the experience is a bit mad. I've seen people do vlogs on it and how hard it is to get places and shit. But I think as a pure music festival, it is quite decent. So I see why they go there. This video in particular, I don't get why it's so outrageous. Why people are going crazy about it? Because if anything, this just highlights how weirdly homophobic people are in North America. Because this is a nothing thing. This happens like all the time with boys and your friends, like just embracing each other in this silly way and pretending to whine on him. Everyone's now looking at it as like Jaden Smith is like Justin Bieber's side piece or something. It's like, bruh, they're really, really good friends. They've been good friends and close for a very long time. Sometimes when you see a boy, you just want to bend him over and give him a little bang on the back, innit? Just to kind of remind him that you're boys. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with giving your boy a couple of strokes in public just before you head to the fucking stage? What's wrong with, you know, tonguing down your boy? What's wrong with giving your boy a little tug quickly before you go get a, grab a hot dog before you go and watch fucking, I don't know, Post Malone perform? Haven't you ever kind of rubbed up against your boy one time with your flipping dick out? It's standard, man. This is particularly normal. I don't see there's anything wrong with this. You know, it's not gay if you're both fucking laughing. It's not gay if you're both fully clothed. <laughs> What's the issue here? I really don't see the issue. I was surprised this became a big thing. I, I would have thought, especially in this progressive world that we're in now where everyone's trying to be inclusive and you know open-minded i would have thought people would have been open to this i would have thought this would have been a encouraging thing to see two young men in touch with their in touch with their sexuality seeing each other in public and be like hey let's fuck let's quickly fuck through our flipping jorts let's quickly fuck let's quickly fuck through this fucking fabric come on man let's go I, th I thought that was what people would have done but instead people are out here clowning calling them names you know calling them a bunch of sticks other derogatory words which obviously i won't repeat on this platform because i'm an ally but overall i don't see a problem with this at all there's been plenty of times when i've bent over some of my friends and given them a couple good poundings that's what friends bloody do that's what boys do if you're like ca can you really be boys unless you've seen each other coom can you really be boys unless you stare into each other's eyes as you're coming to the point of cooming can you really say your boys until you've seen each other's peace? Can you? Exactly. Exactly. So big up Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith. Big up Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith. On top of that, I really did enjoy Peggy Goo's performance at Coachella. Peggy Goo did a really good job. I'm not going to lie. And this is something that I've always been very staunchly, I would always repeat on my platforms and stuff as much as I would give her some raggings for being a little bit, you know, going through the motions and being a bit of a robot, not having much of it, having basically the personality of a cardboard box and shit. You can't deny as a professional artist, as a professional DJ of the highest level, she has an ability to like turn it on whenever she's performing. She never goes through the motions. She's always like there, present, giving you a fucking barnstorming show. And the show that she did at Coachella was really fucking fun. Number one, the visuals were great. You see here via her Instagram, she had a massive, it was basically, I think her design was all the same for all the stages. It kind of looked like an eye. It was like an eye shape. And that circle thing was where they had the screen. And of course, on the outside was where they had extra lights and shit. So I guess that everyone had the same sort of setup, but it worked really well because the DJ booth as well, um, kind of um doubled up as a screen so you could project a whole entire image on that circle section of the stage which was really cool and then she also had dancers on the stage um the only thing i would say about peggy good performance which i was a little bit you know, it's a little bit bad taste in the mouth is the dancers i feel like peggy goo has never really been known as like an lgbtq plus advocate or ally in any way shape or form or really aligned to the gay scene at all 
So to see her have like people who identify with that or in that community on the stage, dancing and voguing and shit and whatever, it just felt a bit performative. It felt a little bit, it felt a little bit yucky. I'm not going to lie. The stage show was amazing. I love the graphics on the screen and shit, but the dancers felt very, very performative. It felt like she was kind of using them to appear like she's part of that when she's not really, you know what I mean? Like she does these massive festivals, these massive big arena shows. She's not really a part of that LGBTQ queer scene at all in the slightest, but whatever. I still think the dancers were amazing. They kept the energy up. They were down stage shaking their rumpers, giving their, their all. The graphics and the flipping designs on the stage were really cool, really bright. And that's something thing i really give her give her credit to for i think her style of you know her personal style definitely does influence her how she presents herself on stage like it's way more bright and like light-hearted and fun than most djs most dj stage shows are super dark super somber industrial stripped down bare but peggy goo like really goes for it and i'd imagine even though she gets paid a lot of money i'd imagine it's still quite a lot of money to put these shows on She's still having to invest in like hiring people to do the, you know, the effects and to do the video and the audio, whatever, and the lighting. So she's probably shelling out a bunch of money to do these type of shows, but it does pay dividends because they're fun to look at visually. You know what I mean? And you get a lot of bang for money. And this is something I have to say, having watched a lot of the DJ shows during, Co Pre during Coachella, as much as people in my scene, the underground scene, the techno scene, underground techno, underground house scene, whatever it may be, the actual underground rave scene, they love to rag on the business techno guys and the EDM guys. But let's be honest. Yes, their ticket prices are crazy. Yes, they're performing all the bait places. But I think these EDM business techno guys, they put on a far better, way more fun show than the quote-unquote underground guys and girls. The underground guys and girls turn up with a pair of Sennheiser HD25s, they turn up with their favorite USB stick and they just plug and go. They don't put any effort into the production of the show. There's no visual part of it. There's no there's no specific lighting, nothing. They don't even have merch for sale, bruh. They just turn up, put on the, you know, play for an hour and then duck out, collect their fee later. At least with these EDM guys and girls, these business techno people, however you're going to describe them, they put on a fucking show. There's pyrotechnics, there's smoke, there's lights, there's drones, there's balloons, there's dancers on the stage. They go fucking nuts. Whole production. And I think that's something you have to give these guys credit credit for because you get your money's worth. People that went to go see Peggy Goo, I think definitely feel like they got their money's worth. So big up her for that. Um, love the performance. I, I watched most of it. I've got actually a lot of it recording on my phone. I'm probably going to do a full reaction of it on my kick. So if you want to check it out, I'll react to, to it in full on my kick, which you can find at kick.com for slash Agostino Zinga. You'll find that link in the description below. Um, again, I found the whole using of, you know, these type of looking people to be a little bit icky. I'm not going to lie. Um, and this is something that she's done I think in the last few years, ever since Nana Na came out, she's been trying to position herself more with this type of community thing. And I feel like, you know, it's a little bit icky, but again, does it really matter when you're basically platforming people and you're basically putting them out there on the biggest stage? You know, it's probably, it serves a purpose and it probably is going to be a beneficial in the end anyway. But I felt it a little bit icky, a little bit icky. I'm not going to lie. But again, who knows? Maybe they could be her friends. Either way, Peggy Goo smashed it. Great fucking show. She looked amazing up there. Um, and again, love light and all bright and airiness up there. I fucking loved it. I fucking loved it. The next thing I loved as well, Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey, sublime performance. Her voice sounds exactly like the CD. And number one, forget all that shit. She looked phenomenal. I have a feeling this isn't Ozempic weight loss. I think this is just pure back to basics. Tighten up your diet bang on the exercise and maybe a couple of bumps on a weekend right maybe a couple of lines on a weekend whiskey and coke and shit but tighten up your your diet and good exercise regime because she looks like she's lost weight the group the real way because she had if she did those Olympic, she'd look more more sickly she have the droopy face the hollowed face whatever we know what the telltale signs are but she looks in prime shape ridiculously good and ready to go on tour, whatever it may be. And again, just a another reminder of just how much of a star and icon that she is. That she went through all her hit records and absolutely smashed it on the stage. And if I think in general, considering the pace and the the tempo of her songs, I think she did a really good job in terms of captivating and kind of capturing that entire crowd throughout the entire performance. I really fucking enjoyed it. So big up Lana Del Rey. Another person who I really enjoyed, 
another person I really enjoyed was Ice Spice. Ice Spice, that, this might have been the most enthusiastic and the most hype I've ever seen Ice Spice perform. I don't think I've ever seen Ice Spice perform this hype and enthusiastic as she was at Coachella. She's usually quite, you know, she's quite a chill person. Some people would say she's on the spectrum. I don't really, I wouldn't go that far. But she's pretty laid back, you know, kind of does her own thing and doesn't really go out and, you know, kind of blast herself, whatever it may be. But I feel like this performance was a real big deal for her. She was like, oh my God, I'm headlining fucking Coachella. So she came with it. Production-wise, the fucking set was... Hold on, let me the sound. Let me view the sound. The set design was fucking amazing. Her big head over there. It kind of looked like a graffiti, kind of, you know, like a train thing. Dancers on stage. And she was screaming on the stage, singing her bar. She looked incredible in her outfit. She debuted a lot of new tunes and shit. It was fucking good to see her like this. I'm not going to lie because literally she's usually kind of boring and kind of shit to kind of watch live. But she was turned up. Ice Spice was turned fucking up. I loved it. So Ice Spice fucking smashed it. Um, I think this bar people are going crazy about was this new song. It says, bitch, you're losing the plot. Um, that's why I got to the top. And no, I don't got any ops. Like, why would I be for the flop? Who's bigger than she? Who's prettier too? Who's bigger than me? Like she killed it. Ice Spice fucking killed it. And again, I'm 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 a big fan of hers anyway, so I'm gonna be a bit, you know, a little bit um biased in that regard. But I've also been critical of her performances. They've been kind of lazy. She goes through the motions, there's not really much she's doing, she's just shaking her ass. But this time she combined it all. She did the whole ass shaking. By the way, when Ice Spice bends over and shakes her ass, the crowd goes mental. So I don't blame her for doing it because it's such an easy applause break. They go fucking nuts. So big up Ice Spice for it. And I love this POV they did with this wireless camera where the dancers kept like dancing around over the POV. So it made it look like you're watching a fucking porno. <laughs> but she killed it. Ice Spice fucking killed it. So big up Ice Spice for doing an incredible job and really reminding bitches what the levels were. She fucking killed it. So big up Ice Spice in that regard. Another one who I really loved during Coachella weekend number one was of course Tyler the Creator. Tyler Crate is always great, right? There's no denying that Tyler Crate is one of the greatest performers of his generation, of his, you know, of his peer group. He brought out loads of great people. He brought out Danny Glover. He brought out Tyler the Creator. Sorry, um, ASAP Rocky. But just in general, the stage design, the fucking set list, the, the bit at the start where he kind of blew out the fucking caravan he was in and the whole skit around it was just incredible. Charlie Wilson coming out on the piano. Fucking fantastic. This is a short clip that features Tyler the Creator and Rocky on stage. But yeah, it looks amazing. Look at that. It looks fucking amazing. The projection, how he looked, fucking shining. I loved everything about it. I loved everything about it. We continue on with that one. We're going to say Doja Cat also killed it, by the way. Um, Doja Cat looked amazing. She had this incredible outfit on where she was covered in blonde weave essentially um it kind of reminded me of the, the iconic um flipping margella show back in the day she was just covered in hair from head to toe she looked absolutely phenomenal like let's not lie those kind of look absolutely great there on stage covered in this fucking hair outfit wig thing going on absolutely amazing and just absolutely killed her set no word of a lie in that regard she was fucking great face cards not declining looks fantastic but when I was watching the performance and her entrance, right, and her just moving around the stage, number one, you were reminded, oh, shit, she's a dancer dancer, right? And she's really fucking fit because this kind of bear walk thing that she does, this bear walk thing that she does is really hard. It's not easy to do. This kind of, it's almost like a bear walk. If you're not fit, you don't have agility. This is really difficult. So the fact that she's doing it so easily... It's proof that she's incredibly, you know, she's incredibly limber and shit. But the show was incredible, really, really fun show. But it was a reminder of the reason why she's not regarded so highly, even though she's an incredible artist. She's not very likable. And it, it shouldn't really matter, I think, in music and art. I think people should be able to separate the art from the artist. But I think in Doja Cat's case, one of the reasons why people don't, because I think if you watch clips of her during, during a tour this year, or you know, that finished this year anyway, you would have seen her performing amazing, bro. She's really good on stage. Really fucking good live. But she never really got much coverage about it. You didn't really see much about it written, even though I think a lot of the dates were sold out. There wasn't much coverage about it. And I think a lot of it just has to do with how unlikable she comes across on the internet. So I wonder, in Doja Cat's case, 
if there's a case to be had for as much as she's really quirky personality wise and she you know she can be charismatic and really engaging maybe there's something to be said for just shutting up beyonce style never speaking and just putting out fucking albums and records because that might be the way that she gets highly regarded because i think she's got a little bit of like cardi b Nicki minaj syndrome where sometimes people just can't get past their personality to enjoy the music i think Nicki minaj is kind of different because the music catalog is just so it's so fucking deep it's impossible not to respect and like her as a musician but i think doja cat is just too young and new in the game to have that kind of level of grace and she probably not she's not probably kanye level so people to not because i think that there, there's probably a level of talent where people don't care about you as a person if you're a dickhead you have to be kanye level of a talent like a genius level for people to be like okay i can do it i can just re- ignore how much of a dick they are as a person i can just concentrate on the art but i don't think doja's at a level yet but she's close so i think maybe if she just completely turns off you know talking to her about her fans turns off talking about the industry and just focuses on the music i think she could be all right but i don't know i'll just remind her so i was like people don't talk about doja cat enough she's really fucking amazing but she fucking killed it another person that fucking killed it i really enjoyed was lil yatty lil yatty snapped lil yatty's performance was so good he had a live quote-unquote choir singers on there he brought out justin sky to sing some bits and he also brought out fucking mac fucking demarco mac fucking demarco is a special guest let me play a little bit of, the, of fucking lil yatty's set and he also had a massive boat there that says little boat that he was kind of standing and sitting on and shit it was really cool he had a cool outfit on as well all denim with the headband with the matching fucking shoes but he smashed it live band too by the way no backing track live band only i fucking loved it by the way i've got a feeling as well i saw more rappers more hip-hop artists performing without a backing track now, what is a backing track? Backing tracks are usually when musicians get on stage and they basically perform over the same track that you have on your MP on your MP3 players or your phone, but they just lower the vocals so that they could just scream over them. Personally, for me, if coming from an indie band background and coming from going to metal shows and punk shows, I think that's deplorable. I think when you do a live show, you should be doing a live show you should be doing like all the old school hip-hop greats where they were performing you know you could hear them fucking breathing into the mic and shit on a fucking instrumental but nowadays i think artists are lazy because they only record one version of the record whatever version they record it gets put up on fucking streaming platforms and they make a fucking non-explicit version but they usually don't keep a version that's stripped that they, they they usually don't keep a stem version of it without the vocals so it's already done and they can't go back in and take away the fucking vocals because it's already done so i have to kind of remake it and it takes too much money to do that so they'd rather just scream over an mp3 now my theory is this recently there was an article that came out that said that hip-hop is no longer the number one music genre and i also remember seeing a clip of offset saying that a lot of big hip-hop acts aren't getting booked at the big festivals anymore because a lot of the festivals feel like these hip hop acts aren't they don't they, they don't they're not worth the 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 fees. They don't bring back a lot because the shows they do are bare minimum. They just bring a DJ, they don't really bring a band. There's not much of an experience. So the the, the festivals now, I'm sure some of you have seen it, there's now more of a of a turning towards booking pop acts and booking bands now. It's kind of become a thing now. Like going back into the archives and booking the old bands like Vampire Weekend or booking newer bands and shit. But more of that instrumentation so that people, when they're paying their $100 plus for a festival ticket, they feel like they got their money's worth because they see people on stage who are literally performing the music as opposed to just a rapper singing over an MP3 that you already have on your phone. So I think it's no surprise to see some of the rappers on stage at Coachella doing what Lil Yachty did and performing with our backing track. Lil Yachty did it even further. He he probably invested a lot of money. He probably didn't make that much money from his Coachella set because he had to build this whole stage. He had fucking singers. He had a girl on keys. He had people on drums, on guitar. So he probably invested a lot into it. But I think this is the way to go forward because this is a way to kind of make the experience worthwhile because I remember once seeing, I think it was Future back in the day, perform at the O2 and it was horrible. He was just screaming over an MP3 and then the next time I saw him, he then started performing like over like a non, you know, without a backing track. So basically the instrumental and just have the vocals on the chorus to give your voice a break. And that was incredible. And I think that's the bare minimum they could do because, you know, you look back at some of the old school greats, you know, 
Method Man, all these type of dudes back in the day, they'd always perform a cappella. And I think that's the way to go about it. So it's no coincidence that Lil Yachty did it and absolutely killed it. It's a big up Lil Yachty. But Damon Alban from fucking Blur didn't get the reaction or reception that he wanted. This entitled old fucking fart was complaining and said that he's never going to come back to Coachella because they weren't singing along to his fucking records. It's like, bro, how entitled could he be? So this is Coach of the Telegraph. Blur's Damon Alban berates silent Coachella audience for not singing. Right? Frontman Blur, Damon Alban, has berated the fucking Coachella grand for not singing along to one of his band's hits. The Britpot singer raged at the festival crowd in California as he tried to encourage some audience participation. Again, don't get me wrong, Blur's legendary band, but you're also expired. You're also dusty old men. You're 56 years old, mate. You're performing in front of Gen X's and Gen, no, Gen Z's, basically, kids. Like, know your fucking audience, play your fucking hits, and keep it moving. You're not gonna, this isn't like an old fogey dance. This isn't you playing at fucking Hyde Park. That that you have more reasons to be upset about, but relax. Anyway, the Britpot singer raged at the festival crowd in California um, and tried to encourage him some in participation. Alban grew frustrated with the crowd's silence and said, you're never seeing us again, so you might as well fucking sing this. <laughs> what a cunt. That's, that's equivalent to a comedian saying, oh yeah, the crowd were really tough. The crowd weren't really engaging. It's like, no, it wasn't the crowd, motherfucker. It was you. You're boring. We don't care about what we have to say. You're fucking shit. Footage has circulated of the awkward silence Blur expressed on stage as he performed 1994 song Girls and Boys. Album 56 says, yeah, he should have performed Girls and Boys and Dems. Maybe they would have fucking replied then. Girls and Boys, Days and Dems. That might have actually worked. Our band 56 sings the lyrics, always should be somebody before holding a mic to the audience and expectation for them to say, you really love. Obviously, kid, honest, honestly, Damon Alban needs to be given a fucking head wobble. Does Damon Alban think any of these kids in his picture know who fucking Blur is? Does he really have that kind of an ego to think any of these kids would know who fucking Blur is? Come on, bruh. These girls look like they're not even over 22. Do you really think they fucking know who Blur is? Come on, man. Come on. What a dickhead. Met with silence, he told the crowd that he would, he would go one more and you could do better than that. Despite the luckluster performance of girls, Blur's official social media account thanks Coachella for their participation. Um, girls and Boys was the first single released from Blur 994 single Park Life. Most of these kids weren't even born in 994. They are probably born in 2004. Anyway, the band whose members are our band. Blah, 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 blah. So let's see. He said they're not going to see us again. I, I guess they're going to turn down the extra fee and not go to weekend two, maybe. But it's no, it's no loss. We don't really need them. We don't give a fuck. So fuck blur. One person who did do well and who does sing and who isn't a band is Mac DeMarco. Mac DeMarco came on stage and as a secret guest uh, for fucking little Yaty set, and he fucking killed it. Let's play a little clip here of Mac DeMarco killing on stage. <laughs> Look at him, such a legend, such a legend. By the way, Mac DeMarco is also a perfect, a perfect example of sobriety done the right way because he got sober and, you know, he doesn't really bleat on about it too much, but he looks incredible now compared to how he used to look. If, if, if you're a big fan of fucking Mac DeMarco, you're a big fan of fucking Salad Days and you like, like me, you think Salad Days is one of the greatest albums of all time and you see Mac DeMarco perform live, you would have known that he's known for having really wacky live show appearances where he really performs differently from how the song is, you know, he does a unique rendition of the song that you listen to all the time live. And I remember one time I saw him performing, I think he came to London. I forgot what festival it was. And he literally stripped off, basically down to his fucking tighty whities and was on stage directly. This is obviously when he was, you know, still drinking and doing drugs and shit. And I don't know if he was high or whatever, but, you know, he didn't look the way he does now. He He's in far better shape. He clearly looks like he's healthy. He clearly looks like he's in a good space. And it's great to see. He's like a real good example of like, you know, getting sober and not becoming boring, getting sober and not it being your whole personality 
and really fucking living it because he's still able to make amazing music. He's still held in high regard, blah, 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 blah. But there was a part where back in the day where he would go crazy, legitimately. I remember he was like on stage, just taking off every piece of clothing, every song until he got down to his tight white. He's like a legit rock star. So big up, uh, big up Mac DeMarco. I'll take Mac DeMarco over Damon Alban every fucking single day. Oh, and no doubt, killed it no doubt killed it um probably again the crowd probably didn't know a lot of their songs but they just went through the fucking hits amazing band great performance great control of the crowd like just just incredible i got no other words to say about it i fucking enjoyed the whole entire show i watched it all weekend i fucking loved it so big up um them and then lastly skepta 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 he even quoted me as well. Skepta even fucking quoted me on Twitter for my compliment on the big old Twitter. Big Smoke Skepta quoted me because he did amazingly well. And why did Skepta do amazing? Why was Skepta's performance more, most impressive? Because Skepta's on stage, just him. He's not a very animated, hype guy anyway. He's very laid back, very chill. It's just him and his DJ performing on stage. No theatrics, no real crazy graphics, no big smokes and shit, no pyrotechnics, just crazy on the mic. Great control of his breath, great control of the stage, just destroying. And I personally think that's harder to do than somebody that could dance, somebody that's got a bit of a gimmick and shit. Just to stand on stage and just go through your hit records is really hard. And he did it spectacularly well, even more so because it's an English act. He's a UK act. I feel like UK acts have a hard time breaking into the US. Um, you guys over there, the same way that we kind of laugh at your accent, I think you guys don't take us seriously with our accent, especially when we're rapping. You kind of just look at us like we're corny. So the fact that he's able to command the stage and hold the attention of the US audience says a lot about him and his level of artistry she's at the moment. And I fucking loved every part of it. Really strong performance. Again, I'll probably do a full reaction to this on my kick. So definitely sign up to my kick or kick.com for just Agassino Zinger. I'll definitely do a live reaction on there of the whole thing because I recorded it on my phone. I've got to upload it because if I upload it on YouTube, it's going to get fucking copyright claimed. But if you want to see a live reaction of me reacting to Skepta's performance at Coachella, sign up to my kick and I'll be happening in the next couple of days. But Big Up Skepta absolutely killed it. Absolutely fucking killed it.